Awesome, guys. Hey, welcome back to Reflecting Him Podcast, just to reintroduce ourselves. I am Casey Slack, and this is Brian Murphy. So today we are, so today we are on the topic of embracing your identity. And so real quick, we're going to just kind of dive right into it. So kind of the Lord put on my heart is before you kind of embrace your identity, um, you kind of have to acknowledge your identity first. And so a part of acknowledging your identity is um, I, I have three steps for that. So the first one is so, so God loved you so much that he sacrificed his own son that you may have an opportunity to have eternal life. And this is clearly spoken on John three sixteen. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And so wh- when it comes to that, it, it's God literally sacrificed his only begotten son for you, for you and for you, you know, that, that's, that, that's special. You know, the, the second point that I want to get to is just as Jesus Christ is the son of God, we too, in the eyes, are children of God. You know, that is, that is spelled out in John chapter one, verse 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So when you decide that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, that allows you to be adopted into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. That allows you to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and it allows you to walk with the joy that God has always desired you to have. But a part of that is that you have to have the Holy Spirit to enjoy the joy, to enjoy the joy <laughs> of, of what God has for you. You know, and just real quick, the third point of acknowledging your identity that I want to get into is Jesus is our number one supporter who by no means wants nothing but the best for us. He had a limited time here on earth. Although he acknowledged that. And what did he do? He sent the helper, the Holy Spirit. Now, when he sent the helper, the Holy Spirit, he then goes on to, 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 to really affirm us in our identity. And when it comes to affirming us in our identity, it talks about how he desires us to do greater works even than what he did here on earth. Amen. You know, that is just extremely special. So Brian, how in your own walk with the Lord, how have you acknowledged your identity and then embraced your identity? So there was a, there was a long period of time from just before, just before middle school to like throughout middle school and throughout high school where I really dealt with identity issues. Um, and I, to the point where I was even questioning my sexuality when I was questioning who I was in the world um, who I was as a son to my mom and my dad um, and you know as a as you know a sibling even and it wasn't until um, I finally surrendered my life to God um, that I really started to find out who I was and that was through surrender that was through uh, obedience to God um, and the more and more that I surrendered different parts of me, the more I realized, or the more I could see his image, his heart, and his face in those areas in my life. Mm. So, Good. and you know, what he said about those, those parts, and all the things that he had to say about me was positive. All the things that he had to say about me was reaffirming. All the things that he had to say was validating. Um, and encouraging and that's what that's what really stood out to me is that he had nothing to say negatively yeah he, he did he did not once did he say I was a mess up not once did he say you know he wasn't proud of me um, even when I thought I wasn't living up to expectation of God he always said I'm proud of you I'm proud of you I'm proud of you Amen. Um, and it just kept breaking me down breaking me down it kept breaking away 
these layers upon layers of just disappointment, discouragement, um, invalidation, mm. um, both you know from from growing up from my parents, from um, you know, and from just the world and and friends too, you know, yeah. th- those lies that friends um, you know would speak over me, whether they were intentional or unintentional. Um, but definitely ignorant. Yeah. Um, those begin to break away too, and more and more, my true creation was was revealed, and who Jesus really said I was. Amen. Yeah. As you were talking, I was just kind of reminded. So in First Corinthians chapter fourteen, uh, Paul goes on to talk about um, the prophetic, and uh, a part of what he mentions in First Corinthians chapter fourteen is you know, is that, you know, the prophetic is used to, to edify, Mm -hmm. you know, it it is also there to, um, to help assist, you know, someone who may not believe in Jesus, but to, but to allow the Holy Spirit move so that they can have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but also, but I just want to touch on the word edify, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, what the prophetic is, is, you know, for those who may not know is the prophetic is, uh, if someone is gifted in the prophetic, it's it's God literally speaking through them. It's the Holy Spirit literally speaking through them. Yes, sir. And so that is extremely encouraging. Um, you know, if if when you when you're going to acknowledge your your identity in Jesus Christ, and someone gives you a word, you know, you you discern it, of course. But um, if it's truly from the Lord, it'll always be to edify you because. Jesus is so, so proud of you. Amen. Jesus is so proud of you. Yes. And so, um, real quick, we're going to go into the, the four steps of embracing your identity. You know, we, we've touched on acknowledging your identity. Now it's time to embrace it. So, my first one is, is fleeing from sin is a part of your identity in Christ. So, you know, it you talk about in the in the bible um where in in the law it talked about you know if a woman was caught in adultery that she were to be stoned um and this this plays out when jesus christ was here on earth but what did jesus do he said okay the person who has not sinned go ahead and cast the first stone and what you see is that each and every single person dropped their stone and walked away they dropped their stone and walked away at that moment jesus christ said hey we are not we are not a condemning type god Mm -hmm. we are a god of forgiveness and that sets the tone now you have to pay attention to what he says to the to the woman who was caught in adultery Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. When you are accepted, when you when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you go from a sinner to a saint. Yes, we are all we are all sinners. You know, we are not perfect. We are not we are not Jesus, but we have been called to lead to live a Jesus like life which means that we are not intentionally going and sinning. You know, as as we are here on earth, it is for us to dive in a deepest, deeper, deeper, deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. And that is the first part of embracing your identity. The second part is Jesus who is the son of God but also God in the who but was also God in the physical form desires us as sons and daughters to do the same works that he did but also to go and do greater works than what he did so I touched on this on the first part but what the Bible goes on to say is you know and this is very specifically turned in John chapter 14 verse 12 but it also talks about in the Bible is okay so what are the examples of what Jesus did here on earth what what did he do you know, if, if you may not know the Bible, if you may not know or have read the Gospels or, you know, this, you know, Christianity thing, is it religion, is it relationship, what it is, let me just tell you a little bit about what Jesus did. So, he started his ministry, you know, a little bit later in life, um, but a couple of the examples of what he did is he casted demons out, 
He cleansed lepers. He cleansed the sick. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. And if you're, you know, if you, if you may be hearing these things for the first time, I encourage you, you know, read the Bible. It is clearly stated in what we call the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, if there is anything that you that maybe strives some curiosity of of what Jesus did here on earth, let's let's dive in together. Mm-hmm. You know, let's dive in together. You know, uh, my third point is loving the way Jesus did. You know, that kind of my third and my fourth point come together. You know, loving the way Jesus did, but also being intentional. Now they kind of really coincide. Now something that you that that you have seen you know or or read in the bible or even the show the chosen jesus was extremely intentional with every single person that he came into contact with Mm -hmm. now this even this even includes the pharisees now it was confrontational but it was intentional in the word it talks about you would not question me if you knew who I was, if you understood that I, I, I am a part of the Father and the part of the Father is in me, which yeah. means right here, right now, like I am the physical form of God. And that's what they could not wrap their head around. And yes, you know, it does say that Jesus did withhold that from certain people. You know, even from his disciples, of of them seeing what their what what his true identity was. You know, he 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 kind of wanted to stir their curiosity. I guess you could say, stir their curiosity. You know, sim- asking the simple question. He knows who he is. So he's like, but who who am I to you? You know, who who am I? Who am I to you? You know, and in the Bible it talks about how Peter is like, no, you you know, he claims that you are. You are Jesus Christ. You are the Son of God. Yeah. You know, and he doesn't deny it. You know, um, and, and that's the thing is, is he, Jesus lived a sinless life, right? He, he, he doesn't lie. He doesn't deny. He, he knows who he is. He was just very intricate about what about about what he told in in his walk, in his ministry time, in his thirties. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my favorite verse is First Peter four eight. And above all, love one another earnestly for love covers a multitude of sins. You know, this lines up with what Jesus wants for us. You know, love covers a multitude of sins. And so what that means is, is as, as we are, you know, coming to you guys through, through Instagram, through Facebook, through, through YouTube, just as Jesus already loves you, you know, we're, you know, Brian and I, we love you. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a thing of, of loving is easy when you understand that God loves us so willingly. You know, and, and loving, you know, one another, you know, to, to because it covers a multitude of sins, it, it prevents sin. You know, so Brian and I, we're, we're a part of the same life group. And there's something that is very evident about our life group is that it's extremely intentional, which drives it to be extremely vulnerable, very transparent, and very honest, yeah. which reflects the love that Jesus has for us, but the love that he wants us to express to one another. Now, Brian, I'm to put you on the spot, can you give us an example of what that has looked like in life group? You know, when it comes to vulnerability, transparency, what has just that little act of being vulnerable with your brothers, what has that then led to? So there's that, there's been several times where, um, just being vulnerable with something I was dealing with, um, has honestly brought pretty much immediate breakthrough yeah um one of them was um so one of them was actually just recently so la- uh, this week's home group um i was you know i was vulnerable about being um a little bit um 
um, uh, struggling a little bit, you know, in my finances and in my in my business. Um, and just yesterday, um, I received breakthrough in um, in, in that, and um, God added another source of income um, into into my life. And so that was really cool to see, um, and just how everything kind of fell into place with that because. That opportunity, I actually disqualified for the previous time that I tried applying for it. But this time, um, but this 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 week, something, but there was the Holy Spirit pushed me to apply again, um, and said, you know, I got you back on this, and I did, and and He came through. Amen. Like that. Yeah. Um, another time was when I was really I was really heavily dealing with um, a um, temptation in a previous addiction that I had gotten uh, delivered from and um, this was a while back and and um, you know I got prayed over that it was a spirit of lust was really trying to tempt me a lot and um, uh, immediately upon being vulnerable with my brothers and Christ with that um, that that temptation lost lost all authority. I lost all. Amen. Um, I lost all control, and um, being vulnerable put my mind back in place of control. Amen. Um, because when you when you are vulnerable about the things that you're going f go, going through, they lose control. Yeah. They lose authority. Yeah. And you are now in control because you have verbally put it out on the table. So you know. Um, being able to be vulnerable is now taking control away from you temporarily. So now it's now in uh, it is in in the control of intercession of your brothers, mm. and then spiritually is now put back into your control of be of positive control of of having authority over that. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I also want to touch on um, you know it you know vulnerability, honesty, and transparency. It it can come in a lot of different forms as well. You know, um, as simple as being honest with what pain you're going through. Mm -hmm. You know, just this last, just this last life group, we saw four of our brothers get healed, and mm -hmm. one of them wasn't even present at life group on Tuesday. Oh, wow. He just simply, he just simply shared a text. Simply shared a text with our group chat and said, "Hey guys, will you please pray for my left shoulder? I've had a lot of pain." Mm -hmm. And the next day he was able to testify. He asked, he's like, wow, did you guys pray for me last night? He said, yeah, you know, we did. We, we covered you in prayer, bro. He said, I woke up and I have no pain in my left shoulder. Amen. You know, when you're honest That's with awesome. everything and transparent and vulnerable with everything, God shows up. Holy Amen. Spirit shows up. Amen. Just as we can hear each other, God's listening as well. He sees all, he hears all, he is all. He's everything. Mm -hmm. He's the creator. He's the alpha and the omega. And so I kind of want to transition to a time of, you know, in the comments on, on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube, please, let's, let's, let's take a time to, to be honest with one another. Mm -hmm. You know, embracing your identity of, of loving the way Jesus did. You know, you see my shirt, when souls make disciples. You know, Jesus makes it very clear that the harvest is many, but the laborers are few. Yep. You know, a part of, a part of the, the commission um, that, you know, that, that Jesus does have for us is to go win souls. Is to go win souls. To, for the book of life to be expanded. For mm -hmm. pages to be added. You know, for, for, for family, for, for friends. For it to be a family reunion going up to heaven. Yeah. That the that the people that you want so so badly to have the same eternity that you have that is a part of the commission because even as if if you think about you wanting it more than anything put it an infinite times on it of how much God wants it so much more than you mm -hmm. that's why He sent Jesus Christ down to die on that cross to give us such an easy way. Acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior. Repent and follow him with your whole entire heart. And your name will be added to the book of life. And you become a child of God. And so please, in the comments, in the comments on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, please just go ahead and, and submit some prayer requests. 
you know, they're they're in the comments. We we will be monitoring those. We we just want to to be vulnerable with you. You know, we want to be honest with you and we want to love you well. You know, it, it's one thing to to talk about love and loving one another earnestly. Mm-hmm. But when you stand in prayer and in a session with your brothers and sisters in Christ, there is a shift in that. There's a shift in that. And and we want to open the floor for that. So please, please send send in your prayer request and we would we would love to we would love to pray for you. You know, if um if it please put on your heart if you if you're tuning in on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube, please uh please subscribe, please like it and please share it so that we may have the opportunity to 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 pray for for more people Amen. to 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 step in a place of of support of of trust and of just of of honestly a battle you know um the the thief comes to steal to kill and destroy and i'll tell you right now it gets me pumped up to to step into battle and to pray and intercede um and to allow the holy spirit to just come and and just to kick the devil where he stands Mm -hmm. you know um one of my one of my really good friends one of my first friends israel davis he he got me this you know um as a as kind of a wedding gift and um you know what it what it talks about is take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one take the take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god you know, you see this in Ephesians chapter six, verse sixteen and seventeen. You know, we, you know, that that that's a part of it is is praying and interceding with one another. It is about going to battle. You know, if there wasn't a devil, would we have a reason to pray? Mm. You know, if there wasn't a devil, would we have a reason to pray? Now, some may say no. Some may say yes. The answer we could probably go into it at a little different time, but we just want to take this time to 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 pray to pray for you guys, to Amen. pray so that we can stand in faith with you. Amen. You know, I also do want to take this time to to lift up some of our young ministers. You know, we we uh, from Hungry Gen we got news earlier this this morning. You know um, that that four of them were in a, a pretty bad car accident. So if we could ask uh, for you guys, you know, as, as being vulnerable with, you know, from from our side, um, to set that tone, to to stand in prayer and intercession with us, to pray for these young ministers that were in there. You know, mm-hmm. there there there's one of the gentlemen's that he's in very is very severe condition, and so. Um, let's lift them up in prayer right now. So Lord Jesus, we just pray right now in Jesus mighty name. We pray that your healing, your power, the Holy Spirit flows into that hospital room and touches your precious son head, the skull, his whole entire body, that the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit flows. It flows in Jesus mighty name, in Jesus mighty name, that it flows from just repairs his brain, his skull, that his blood count just is restored and that he will not have to go through surgery, that he will walk out of that hospital as a living testimony of God's healing power. We lift him up in Jesus' mighty name. We lift up the other gentlemen. We, We pray for that healing for that collapsed lung. We pray for that healing that the internal bleeding stops in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for that healing that the stitches, that the, that the, that the staples, that that wound be healed in a supernatural way. Holy Spirit, we just pray right now that you just intercede and you just come with your healing power in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you come and intercede and do what only you can do. Amen. You know, guys, the Holy Spirit, he's, omni- he's omnipresent. He can reach you right right there, right through YouTube, right through Facebook, right through Instagram. So please, 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 let's take this time to pray and intercede. Amen. You know, we, 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 we want nothing more but to stand in prayer with you. Amen. Amen. Guys, as though as those comments are coming in, 
Um, if, if there's no prayer request too small or too big, Amen. God is the, is the God of the mountains. He's the God of the valleys. He's God of the big and the small. He can do everything um, that is impossible and you can make it possible. Amen. Guys, I just want to encourage you that um, there, there's two types of control. I wanted to touch on this before we before we pray. Two types of control. There's control that is that is um, born from pride, and there's control born from surrender. The, the 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 control born from pride is when you're like, God, I don't need you. I have it all under control, and I'm just gonna do life on my own. You can't. I'm just gonna be honest. You can't. I've tried. Casey's tried. You can't. You have to surrender everything to God to get back the control and the authority that you have over the things that you're dealing with. Only when you give control first to God will He give you the strength and the courage and the control back to be like, okay, I die on the cross for you to have authority. Authority is a type of control, and that's the control that you need. You need authority over the things that are trampling you down so you can trample it down. Amen. In Jesus' name. So, guys, continue to comment your prayer requests, um, and uh, we'll we'll continue to monitor those, and we'll be ending here in a little bit after after we after we uh, pray and intercede until those comments stop. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Nothing yes. here on Instagram so far. Yeah, I don't have anything over here. Yeah, and so you know, with um, with that being said, you know, with the uh, if 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 you're if 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 there isn't a prayer request that is coming to your mind right now, we have set up a email account, Amen. reflecting him podcast at gmail dot com. Yep. Please submit your prayer request to that email. If you're watching this video now or later, please, we we truly want to step in prayer with you so please submit reflecting him podcast at gmail.com